In this lecture, we will review depressive disorders according to the DSM-5 TR. Now, depressive disorders in the new DSM-5 TR include disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, major depressive disorder, including major depressive episode, persistent depressive disorder, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, substance and or medication induced depressive disorder, depressive disorder due to another medical condition, other specified depressive disorder, and unspecified depressive disorder. The common feature of all these disorders is the presence of sad, empty, or irritable mood, accompanied by related changes in major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder. What differs among them are issues of duration, timing, or presumed ideology. In order to address concerns in the United States and increasingly internationally about the potential for the overdiagnoses and treatment of bipolar disorder in children, a new diagnosis called disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, referring to the presentation of children with persistent irritability and frequent episodes of extreme behavioral discontrol is added to depressive disorders or anxiety disorders rather than bipolar disorders as they mature into adolescence and adulthood. Major depressive disorder represents the classic condition in this group of disorders. It is characterized by discrete episodes of at least two weeks duration, although most episodes last considerably longer, involving clear-cut changes in affect, cognition, and neurovegetative functions and inter-episode remissions. A diagnosis based on a single episode is possible, although the disorder is a recurrent on in majority of cases. Careful consideration should be given to the delineation of normal sadness and grief from a major depressive episode. Bereavement may induce great suffering, but it does not typically induce an episode of major depressive disorder. When they do occur together, the depressive symptoms and functional impairment tend to be more severe in the prognosis. And the prognosis is worse compared with bereavement that is not accompanied by major depressive disorder. Bereavement-related major depressive episodes tend to occur in persons with either vulnerabilities to depressive disorders. A more chronic form of depression, which is persistent depressive disorder, can be diagnosed when the mood disturbance continues for at least two years in adults or one year in children. This diagnosis, which is new to the DSM-5, includes the DSM-4 diagnostic categories of chronic major depression and dysthymia. After careful scientific review of the evidence, premenstrual dysphoric disorder has been moved from an appendix of DSM-4 which is the criteria, sets, and axes provided for full study, to Section 2 of the DSM-5. Almost 20 years of additional research on this condition has confirmed a specific and treatment-responsive form of depressive disorder that begins sometime following ovulation and remits within a few days of menses and has a marked impact on functioning. 
A large number of substances of abuse from some prescribed medication and several medical conditions can be associated with depression-like phenomena. This fact is recognized in the diagnoses of substance medication-induced depressive disorder and depressive disorder due to another medical condition. In my next few lectures, I will go more in depth in regards to depressive disorders. But in my next lecture, we will review disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. 